Hi, and welcome back to another HHL success story interview. My name is Alexandra, and I'm excited to introduce to you my next guest for today. I'm here with Matthias Bosse, HHL alumni, and we're talking about his career in venture capital investment, early stage investment, why he loves to work with startups, and what the supply chain management industry has in store for him this coming year. Thank you, Matthias, for joining me. I'm excited to start our conversation. Thanks for having me. Looking forward. So I said um, our topic today is supply chain, venture capitalism. That's not something that necessarily uh, has to be put together, but I know it's something that has come together for you in your life and your career. And I'm going to talk about both things in a second in more detail. I'd like to look at your past as a senior investment manager, specifically managing early stage venture capital funds. And not everyone will know exactly what that means. Can you tell us a bit more what your job actually entails? Yeah, sure. So um, I think there are three major parts for uh, my job as a, as a venture capital investor. So first of all, I'm uh, looking for the most of my time uh, to find promising technology startups to invest in and to build up a great portfolio uh, for my fund. So I spend the most of my time searching for early stage uh, technology companies, any, analyzing the ones I've found, uh, talking to the founders, talking to other investors, talking to the users or clients, um, and by that building kind of a network to find the best deals and make the right decisions um, and then finally do the investment. Um, I think the second part of it is, uh, is then managing the portfolio I've built. So which means that I'm trying to help these startups to grow their companies, to acquire customers, to get in contact with uh, potential corporation partners, convincing new invest uh, investors, and yeah, in general, overcoming the challenging uh, that are out there by building uh, for building a, a, a big company. And um, yeah, so of course, all of that uh, uh, with the goal of doing a successful exit and uh, someday in the future, um, which is an endeavor of its own. Um, and last but not least, so every uh, just as a startup, um, all venture capital funds also have to think about their, their own strategies, about their own marketing efforts, about their own fundraising from, from limited partners for their fund and doing all the administration around that, uh, like uh, reporting and other administrative stuff. So I think those are the three main pillars of my job. I know venture capital um, and the whole industry has been part of your career for a very long time. Was that something you were always looking to get into? What's, what's your journey been coming from? I know you've studied at HHL, maybe from that time to where you are now, or was it something that actually was already an interest before you joined HHL? Uh, no, actually, I would say, um, so I started out in logistics many, many years ago, um, before I then um, uh, went into consulting and uh, did my MBA at, uh, at HHL. And I think it was also due to HHL and all the entrepreneurial spirit around that, that I got interested in, 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 in startups. So um, after HHL, I then spent still three years in consulting. Uh, before I myself then decided to join a really early stage uh, startup company and uh, help to build that for three and a half years. Um, and uh, that was really not always, but most of the time it was fun and, 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 and really, really a, a, a wild ride. Uh, before then, one of, the, uh, one of the investors approached me whether I would be interested to do it from the investor side for the coming years. And I decided to do that uh, because I found it was kind of a really good combination of, of, of project work. So working on, on, on more than one startup, so having kind of a portfolio of startups to work with. And uh, also to benefit from my transaction experience, which I gained at Ernst and Young, um, and um, yeah, so then uh, this was uh, how I got into VC, and uh, so I still like it very much because it's for me it's the perfect combination of doing kind of transactions and investing money, and on this, at the same time helping entrepreneurs uh, building startups and build something where where nothing existed before. Uh, so I think that's uh, that's a perfect combination for me, especially. You actually just published um, a book called The Supply Chain Management Handbook, if I'm correct. And I know that was an incentive to help the industry around supply chain management and also support startups, um, among others in that industry. What is your connection? You said you came from supply chain, but um, I know this is actually a project that's going to be a little bigger than the handbook itself. What got you so interested in this industry? And can you tell us a little bit more about the handbook and everything that goes along with it? Yeah, sure. So as I said, I once, uh, so many years ago, um, I started out in, in, in logistics uh, or during my consulting years, 
every now and then I also had projects in, in transportation and logistics. So the topic was somehow uh, with me all the time. Um, uh, and when I then joined the investor side uh, uh, some years ago, um, I found this is one of the areas I, I still want to look in. So it wasn't a focus area um, at this time. Um, but um, as I then joined Seed and Speed Ventures uh, some years ago, I, I was a bit, a bit more free in, in, in choosing my focus areas. And uh, so this was, uh, was one, of the, one of the topics that were uh, yeah, less digitized than others. Um, and uh, so we decided or I decided for myself that I want to focus a bit more on B2B investments, on investments that are really, uh, really a key function for our economy. Um, I'm not too much into the B2C um, uh, investments. So I decided that all this, uh, all the topic of logistics supply chain management from sourcing to last mile, so the whole whole range of, uh, of of those functions is really really super interesting and super important. And 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 uh, when I started uh, to to dig in a bit deeper, then then it became even more clear to me because this is one of the industries that is still the least digitized. What's a, a bit astonishing because by nature, um, this industry sits on a crazy amount of data. It's had so many interfaces. This is so international. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, so, and really a backbone of our economy, which became obvious to everyone during uh, uh, COVID. Um, and um, yeah, so I think there is still a lot of challenging to be addressed and a lot of cool startups out there. Um, and I thought it would be a good idea to make this a bit more transparent. So that's why I started this uh, supply chain management um, handbook with the idea of then really connecting all the different uh, uh, all the different sides because there are startups uh, uh, trying to gain a bit more visibility, uh, corporates uh, that uh, try to find good solutions that are out there because they can't develop anything or everything on their own. Um, and um, yeah, so the idea was then also to build my network in terms of then creating something that's worth downloadable and, 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 and that the users find interesting and, and, and get in touch with me. Um, and um, yeah, so that worked out pretty well. Uh, so uh, I think that's very interesting. And um, for the next uh, for the next time, I will then focus on this topic. So that's actually a good hint at the future because I know in our conversation you have given me a bit of an insight into what's ahead and what's what's coming up for you basically. Um, share as much as you'd like to, but I'd be I'm very curious to hear um, what the next steps are for you. Yeah, sure. So as uh, um, at the end of uh, 2021, I uh, I left Seed and Speed Ventures to really fully concentrate on on on, on what I'm what I'm what I'm planning to do. Um, so uh, actually, together with the partner, I will try to uh, try to establish a small um, early stage uh, first time VC fund uh, focused on sustainable uh, sustainable supply chains. So the whole topic of supply chain management will be our focus area to invest in. So we are just in the early stages. So this is something we are trying to do. Um, we've uh, founded Prequel Ventures um, at the beginning of this year. Um, and now we are working our, our way towards uh, our first fundraising. So still in preparation mode. Um, but I think um, there, 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 there's, there's lots of things to be done. Um, lots of great startups out there. And uh, I think the topic is still relevant for, for the next decade or so. Uh, because there's so many challenges in supply chains these days, and um, yeah, a lot of digital uh, solutions out there that uh, that that can help to transform supply chains really. Because uh, it's it's not only COVID um, or some other uh, some other um, yeah, temporary problem. Uh, I think there's more of a, a bigger challenge to digitize everything, to make it sustainable, to work our way to circular economy. Uh, I think all those uh, all those uh, trends that uh, will help to transform supply chains of today into really um, yeah, transparent, resilient, and and also sustainable value chains for the future. What are some of the challenges, but also some of the opportunities you see for startups in supply chain management looking into the future? Yeah, so as I said, I think that that, that has really a very a very wide range because uh, so it really starts with simple things like uh, connecting all the different data silos that are out there, um, trying to help uh, to to create really smooth processes um, um, and uh, yeah, so there's so many players by definition. Supply chain management is about networks, right? Um, and uh, there there are so many good solutions out there to to overcome those interruptions between those uh, between those uh, players. Um, so the other big, big uh, area, I think, is all this, uh, all the sustainability issues and, and, and circular economy ideas that are that are around that, um, because um, so everyone knows that he has to do something or she. Um, so it, it's kind of corporates trying to trying to become more sustainable, uh, fulfill ESG criteria, etc. 
but they but they they don't have the tools as of today, right? And so they are looking for 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 good cooperation partners. Um, uh, startups can uh, can be of uh, of help here um, very much, I would say. Um, and um, yeah, so um, last but not least, there are more challenges uh, towards it in terms of. Uh, supply chains as of today are much too concentrated. Uh, uh, they are very spread out over, all over the world, uh, which makes them sensible to to all kinds of uh, interruptions. Uh, may it be political things, may it be uh, pandemics, uh, may it be uh, other dependencies. Um, so I think um, that's um, that's uh, one of them. Mm-hmm. That, the areas I mentioned are just some, I would say. There are so many more, but uh, I think that would take too long. I'd like to dive into your experience as um, a senior investment manager and someone who works in early stage investment, because at HHL, we do have a lot of students obviously watching us here and others, of course, alumni and everyone interested in the topic, but also especially um, people thinking of starting up their own business. And I think you have, I'm sure, a lot of experience and advice that could benefit people listening today. And so specifically, I'd like to talk about um, from your experience, is there are there things I'm sure there are, and what are they that entrepreneurs should keep in mind when looking for early stage investors? Yeah, so uh, again, I, I would say there are really a lot of things to be considered, or a lot of things I would like to uh, I would like to say. Um, I would, maybe I should limit it to two uh, to the two uh, main things I would uh, I would like to mention for today. I think one is. Really, especially in the early stages, uh, entrepreneurs should should choose their investors really wisely. So I think there's a lot of money out there as of today, a lot of funds trying to invest uh, money also at very, very early stages. Um, but uh, especially when entrepreneurs raise their first rounds of investment, they ideally find investors that are both willing and capable to help them to find product market fit, uh, to actively support them with their context, their expertise, their critical thinking. They put in the time and effort uh, to, to, to really form uh, form form a basis from which they then scale so right because uh, many enterprises not all of them but many of them uh, try to scale too fast right and, and i think it's really really important to take the time and build a solid foundation from which they can scale and from my perspective uh, uh, it might be better to have four super engaged um, angel investors um, as first um, as first investors um, than a rather passive big VC fund, right? Um, because uh, because um, so they build up their portfolio. They can't uh, invest the time with, with, with all of their companies. Um, so I think especially in the super early stages, it's really important to find the right investor. Um, and the second one, um, it's somehow connected uh, to that one, is uh, that I would advise entrepreneurs not to raise too much money too early. Um, uh, so, um, so I don't mean by that they should be frugal or, or, or limit themselves or don't think big, um, but uh, taking investors' money, especially from big VC uh, funds, uh, so comes at a cost. So it's not only about the dilution, um, they have to give up shares, but uh, it's also about managing all the expectations that come along with a, with a big investment, like all the reporting stuff and corporate governance and reserve matters from which they need shareholders' approval. Um, and, and convincing everyone that the next decision is the right one, uh, because so that then if you take investors on board, the company is not your own anymore, so to say. In in in, in that sense, uh, you have other shareholders, and you have to um, you have to communicate, and you have uh, to tell them what are you doing and why are you doing things differently now. And uh, so that might be a bit dif- a bit difficult, especially in early phases when there's everything so. Uh, there's so so many iterations and maybe even pivoting your business idea to a different uh, to a different idea. Um, so um, it, this might be much easier with yeah a, sm- a smaller shareholder group or with a different kind of uh, with a different kind of shareholders. And last but not least, um, so as especially also very big venture capital funds are investing at super early stages these days. This is on also a risk of uh, of signaling uh, because uh, when you when you take a big check from a from a super well branded uh, tier one VC, um, and you are pivoting your business, and this investor isn't continuing his investment in the future, this might be a difficult signal uh, to other investors because for sure all of them know what the big names are are investing in, um, and um, yeah. So from that sense, I would say uh, it might be a good idea to raise small money from well suited investors at the at the early stages, and then build a solid basis to scale from. Well, thank you so much. That was very insightful and extremely helpful. And I'm glad you shared that with us. 
so that many people can hopefully make the right decisions when they start looking for investors. Um, where can people find you in the future? Where's someone where, where they can connect, maybe a website, um, social channels, something to keep up with what you're doing and follow along? Yeah, for sure. So first of all, uh, uh, they can for sure reach me via my, my, my social profiles, especially I'm very active on LinkedIn. Um, so always happy to, to get connected there. So regarding our supply chain activities, um, we've uh, established a small website, uh, which is scm-startups.com. Um, so everything we will do around uh, supply chain management, um, we will publish there and uh, people can reach out via, via the website um, as well. Um, yeah, so and as I said, we are, we are in the preparation of, of, uh, of starting Prequel Ventures. So there's no website up and running at the moment, but um, so we'll be in the future. Um, so, yeah, so I think LinkedIn and, and scm-startups.com would be the first choice. Perfect. We will have all that information in the show notes um, so that you can check that out. I want to say thank you so much um, for joining me today, for sharing your experiences, for taking us along uh, your life and career journey. And I'm sure many people will benefit greatly from it. Thank you for joining me. And um, I hope everything works out just the way you've planned it and that I'm, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what's coming up for you and following along. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.